Hey, I got in front of me six items that I picked up from GearBest, and I want to put a video up on these. Uh, some of these are quite useful, some are just an everyday item, but I'm going to key in on $42, 42 or 43 for the total price of all these to my doorstep. Yes, and some of them took upwards of possibly a month to get here, but man, the price is just unreal. And to start it off with is a Peltier disc, and we're going to go through what that's designed or what you can use that for. A USB voltage meter, which is to me is quite handy. A typical pocket knife from GearBest, nothing too extravagant or expensive. A battery tester, a little cheapy. And then a hand torch, this is a, a butane styled one. We'll be running that through the ropes. And then a digital tachometer which I tend to use quite a bit. So with the massive savings you get ordering small ticket items like this, is it really worth it? We're going to find out and hope you enjoy. For starters I got the thermoelectric healthier cooler here or a semiconductor. Now this is, uh, I think I paid three dollars and forty two cents a piece for these and I'll throw links in the bottom for all these items. Now these are pretty neat. You apply electricity to it, roughly 12 volts. One side will get very cool, the other side will get very hot. You can use it for quite a few different applications. Starters, I'm going to take an old heat sink out of a computer and just set this on there. And I have a thermometer here on my multimeter. We're going to set it up for Fahrenheit. I'll put that probe on the end. I got a 12 volt motorcycle battery here. We're going to hook these two leads together and watch what happens. Look how fast that climbs. Over 130 degrees. Now, we're going to flip this around and do the same thing. And apply the vol voltage to it. Watch that temperature. Pretty neat. With that short amount of time drop down into the 40s. Now the uses are almost endless for these things. If you're looking at here, basically a generator with the Peltier disc there that runs off candlelight and supplies energy to a LED light bulb that burns eight times brighter than the candle itself. Basically you can use it as a charger to produce electricity. When you apply heat to one side, it's not really efficient, but it will produce electricity up to one and a half volts. Now this one I had to put a jewel thief in, drive it up to three volts to light this LED emitter. Got a bunch of them Pelter discs that I'm going to end up putting, stacking together that I've already tested, and I can produce a lot brighter light without a jewel thief. Like I said, they're pretty neat. Watch this. Once that candle lights up, look at that. I'm a spotlight. Now just for the hell of it, we're going to see how much torture one of these can take. Being as this is kind of a review and person's wondering what the kind of quality products you get. We're going to take some thermal paste, smear it on the bottom of one of these, like so, and put it on this heat sink. Now, I'm going to take a stainless cup that's probably got a couple ounces of water in it, and we're going to set it on there, drop the probe down in, see what happens. Alright, everything's set up. We're looking at 83, 84 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and hook the leads up now, see how much this thing can take. Heat sink is hot. Pretty warm. Dropping a temp of that water pretty fast. I've had that on for over probably four minutes. When we drop roughly five degrees, Let's set this down on here. You notice that got pretty hot. I'm going to hook it back up. Obviously, this thing could take the full blunt of a battery. Over a hundred, almost 150 degrees. Too hot to touch. And that now is starting to warm up. So they could take some abuse. 
Now next up, we got a USB voltage current tester. This is quite handy for determining if your wall wart or your cell phone charger is providing enough amps or finding one that actually can give you enough milliamps to charge your phone properly. And I'll demonstrate that. This is only $4.81 from GearBest. And I have three kids with phones, wife with a phone, I got a phone, we get numerous tablets. We go through a lot of chargers and this is one real quick way to determine what's the best charger and if one's good or bad. What we're going to do is test three typical chargers. A little Motorola, one from for my LG phone, and a cheap $1 dime, uh, dollar general one. And then a Top Don. This is a jump starter for a car, but it'll also charge a phone. It's got a USB. Basically all you do is hook this thing up to your phone and I'm going to use a single cord to compare these. Different cords will give you different ratings as well and that's a good way to compare. So we're going to do a start out with the LG. Hook this guy up. Look at that. One. Looking at five point between 5.1 and 5.13 volts and a big one. 1.3 to roughly 1.2 to 1.35 amps going into that, which I would consider a very good quick charger. Now let's try the Motorola. Look at that. Half an amp, 0.45. That's uh, be a general charger, and this would be considered more of a fast charger. And you can do all kinds of other things with this for testing uh, your drain on your battery and everything else. As far as I'm concerned, these things are indispensable. Let's hook up the cheap Dollar General one. That's right in between. 0.88 milliamps. You can see that. Or I'm sorry, 0.88 amps at 4.92 volts. It'll get the job done. Not a big guy. I use this to charge my Sony action cam quite a bit. That would be considered a fast charger. See that? Pulling in 1.2 uh, upwards of 1.3 volt or amps. Like I said, pretty handy item for what I say a little over four bucks. Can't go wrong. Next up is a universal battery charger. Picked that up for $3.66 shipped. I've got a few of these. They'll run through any 1.5 volt through 9 volt battery. Kind of basic, but for the price you can't go wrong with these things. Take a typical AA battery. That, that pegs out pretty damn good. Even a D battery. You notice there? That's why I selected it. It's actually uh, getting old. Same with that D battery. Simple and to the point. It's not the most heavily made tester, but you don't really need that. Gets the job done. There's the ports for the 9 volt. So right here we got a Edlin EL02 pocket knife. They have tons of knives on their website. And this one here is roughly, I think, 14 bucks. This has that axis lock on it, which is spring-loaded. To me, is about as good as you can get. This is stone washed as well, right from the manufacturer. Quite useful knife. Cheap, pocketable, very durable. And as far as the, the blade itself, I think it says on there what it is. An 8CR13 MOV blade. This is a stainless blade. Like I said, it's hard to show you. Now, I haven't sharpened this at all. It does do a good job of even cutting paper. Not too bad for 14 bucks. Try to get you a little bit better view here of it. Very well built. Now one thing about this though that I've noticed, just almost a little bit hard to open with one hand, but you can do it. About the only thing I don't really care about it but some of the knives I got I just pop open spring assisted but it's not too bad you can do it one handed especially if you have gloves on next up a digital laser photo tech basically a RPM gauge 
got a couple of these. This comes pretty much ready to go. You got your directions, your reflective strips, plenty of that to put on motors or whatever you want to test. This thing's, I think it's running currently like $10.55 battery. These things are quite, quite useful for anybody that likes to measure or needs to measure the RPM on something, whether it's automotive or smaller electronics. This has a 0.05% accuracy and it will measure from 2.5 RPM up to 99,999 RPM. Very easy to use. Just hit test and it, it'll show you what it is. It, is, it doesn't stay on, but it'll show you what the last RPM was. Let's give it a whirl. What I'm going to do is test it out on this floating magnet motor that I built. It's basically an arrow touching a neodymium magnet up front and then balancing between some magnets in the back. And I got that piece of tape right there. The motor, just a battery pack going to a coil. They have a reed switch and a 12 volt light that will pull some of the juice out. That reed switch hits that magnets, goes on and off. Let's fire the baby up. Right there, 1,242, 1,270 going up, 1,278 RPM. I'm going to step back a ways and see if I can hit that from a distance. I'm up to probably two meters back, 1,281, pretty neat. I really like these, or these tachometers, work quite well. So you can't go wrong. $10.55 shipped to your door. And last but not least, the butane burner gas torch. This is under six bucks, like $5.91. I actually use these quite a bit as well. Now this is butane, not propane. One use I got for them, of course for heating stuff up, but out on the grill, this thing is just as good as a lighter as anything for lighting charcoal. Simply turn the dial, it's got ignition. It's got igniter on it. it also uses a flamethrower. Look at that. And while you're grilling, it does a tremendous job browning hot dogs real quick. Look at that. Perfection. Nice and tender inside and a nice crust on the outside. Can't beat them. There you go. Nice little group of electronics and gadgets. Go ahead and check the links out down below for these items. Like I said, I got maybe $42 in everything shipped to me. And there's a tremendous amount of smaller ticket, everyday items that a person would use. Like I said, this torch. You have no idea how awesome these are for grilling out. It just, it's unreal. Uh, the knives, good selection of knives, pretty decent quality. The other things like the USB voltage tester, you run through a lot of phones and got a lot of chargers. This thing is just unreal. So there you go. Electronic goodies. Till the next time.